became a road car. So you were saying Jim Ritz, Richard actually drove this? Yeah, yeah, he won the Green Dots in America. Yeah. And then we bought it from the dad bought it in the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, I was sort of almost like any of those. I thought I was. Yeah. I was like, I'm just running down here. I was on your photo of it in the car yard down in Palmy. Was it Richmond? I don't know Palmy that well. Right in the middle of town. Because there was one, because Dad used to work there, we both used to work there. I worked yep. there when I was about 14. Yeah. And there was one there that they were selling. Yeah. Dad used to work Ago and just to do some other stuff, and then I bought another one to restore a few months ago. So that's actually what I'm going down the farm for. I've got the limited slip diff out of it, taking it to the dip shop to get it oh, yeah. to recondition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I'll tell you a little story. Yeah. There was a BMW for sale in Taupo on the lawn in the summer on the on the on the uh, lakefront, and uh, Stephen Steve's walking his dog. And these boys are on the piss, and they're um, legendary characters from Australia, and they drive supercars. And we won't mention their names because we're not into gossip and claptrap. But anyway, the, I looked at the BMW, and they said to me, they own the house here, you see. And they said to me, take it for a drive, they're on the piss. And I said to them, no, 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 she's right, mate. I'd only just sold my little beam and my missed it, you know, because I, I really like driving it. And anyway, to cut to the quick, the guy insisted I take it for a drive. So I took it for a drive around the block with him, and when we got back, he said, you know, your car skills are pretty pretty good. He says, I noticed the way you turn up. And I said, what do you mean? He says, oh, and he introduced himself. And I said, it's interesting you say that, because I used to work for Chris Hamon, I used to drive for him. And before I could go any further, this is what he said. Chris Amon, who was he? <laughs> and I was so <laughs> fucking pissed. Do you get me? Yeah. I looked at him and I said, what do you mean? I said, I'll tell you who Chris Amon was. I said, Chris Amon was the guy that won the Le Mans in 1966 on drum brakes. And to win that race, because they fell so far behind because they were on Dunlops, they threw the sponsor away and went to Bridgestones halfway through the race. And the only way they went, the reason they won that race back was because, got the lead back was because they hammered it so hard down that Molzane straight, they left their braking until absolute fucking late, drove right into the eighth, into the um, hairpin, and then pulled it around. So they lost two mile an hour on the hairpin, but gained about five or six mile an hour on the straight. Yeah, sure. yeah. And he said, we slowly hauled them in. Yeah, yeah, he was a good driver. I well, said, so that's who Chris Amon was, and that was on drum brakes, mate, and they were, he he was getting 360 to 375 out of that thing that's down the back scary, straight. Yeah. In the that's fucking really range. Awesome. Especially on old Probably cars. Cross boys. <laughs> <laughs> like, like my last SLR 5000, it was actually owned by a Kiwi, a great Kiwi racer as well. It was owned by a guy called Rod Coppins. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he, was a, he, yep. he, owned, he owned a dealership in Auckland as well, and he got, I think he's the highest finishing privateer at Bathurst. He's got right. third one year yep. at Bathurst. Yeah, they did too. So he, he yeah. used to have my yeah. SLR 5000. Right, yeah. It was pretty cool. I wish I should have kept it. Right. Yeah, that's right, they got third. Yep, it was my favourite colour too, Barbados green. Yeah. I wish I'd kept it a new 
one's gold, but still going to look pretty cool. Oh, look at gold. It is. <laughs> do, do you watch? Um, oh, I don't care. It's still an SLR five thousand. Yeah, exactly. Do you watch yeah. YouTube at all? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. Because I just there's a um, series a guy just started watching of the most meticulous panel beaters that I've ever seen. Awesome. He just started restoring. Um, I actually won the same colour Lona Ranger. Oh, okay. Someone said, oh, these guys are awesome. So I watched their previous series. They were doing the body work of a VH yeah. And they don't have There's also a little Anglia here. A 1967 Anglia. There it is. How much? No, I have no idea. Take a guess. Not for sale, I think. Not for sale? It's got to be parked somewhere, eh? Yeah, it's not really parked in that garage. What is this? An Aston Marina. Coop. My god, it's a race car. Great wall, is it? Nice, oh, senior. Last of the behemoth Murdochs. Look at them. What a grand old car. And it's only done 53,000 kilometres. It's unreal. It's a 94 model. 
So here we are in Sanson and this is a 19, this Holden Tirana here is a legendary vehicle in its day for all you guys that love this old sort of stuff. So don't forget to subscribe to googlemo.com because that's what we want. We want subscriptions. We're going to turn this into a hobby, bringing this, googling the moment, just being a pure opportunist, um, bringing it into your, uh, uh, put it this way, there's a lot of people that can't get out and about for one reason or another. And I'm out and about all the time, so I've decided to do this, to bring it into your living room.